IQ is the biggest determinant of your success in the academic world. Okay, the SAT has got a correlation of 0.82, which is super reliable, predicting academic performance. Um, the other the other predictor of academic performance is uh, a G, just called G, and that's the kind of a bunch of different tests they give you in the army. They give you I don't know how many tests: spatial relations, clerical skills, electronics, mechanics, uh, CW, continuous wave, Morse code. Verbal skills, reasoning skills, something, a whole bunch of different tests. They give them to you in 12 hours straight. For some reason, they keep you up for 36 hours before they give you the test. I don't know whether that helps them make sure nobody's dogging it or what, but I don't think I scored as high as I could have if I'd had some sleep. There's 160 questions on most of the areas of the test, and on electronics, I got 22. Okay. <laughs> 22 out of 160, that's not real good, is it? The score, the area I scored the highest in was 158 out of 160 on mechanics because I was always fucking around with cars when I was a kid. My dad explained everything to me about cars and engines and screws and bolts and that's whatever. So I beat the shit out of that part of the test. And when I got my scores back, I said, oh shit, I'm going to be a truck mechanic for, for my entire term. Nope. I was able to score relatively high on the on the Morse code. I think it's because I was in the Boy Scouts and we learned Morse code in the Boy Scouts, but the Army doesn't think so. They give you a test that just determines your native ability to receive dit daws and dot dashes. And anyway, I scored high in that and low in electronics, so they made me a radio operator. <laughs> Why do they make the guys that score low in electronics radio operators? So I asked the sergeant, I said, why? Nobody here knows anything about electronics. He said, that's so you don't get in and fuck around with the radio. And I said, oh, okay, that makes sense. Which reminds me, there's a white guy who was refused employment by the police department, or my notes, New Landon, Connecticut. His IQ was 125. He was judged as too smart to be a cop. Why? Because he would think about what he's doing. He's not going to just do it, beat the shit out of people and handcuff them. He's going to think about it. Does this make any sense or I just let the guy go? They don't want people able to think in the police department. They went to the United States federal court and they held up, upheld the right of the police department to hire people that only had IQs. The highest they hired was 104. <laughs> so when you get stopped by a cop, realize you're dealing with a dumb son of a bitch, okay, who has a gun which even makes it worse. Let me get back to IQ. So we debate, and discuss, we don't debate, we discussed world problems. And my mom moved out here when she was 77. And by the time she was, oh, 82 or something, she wasn't in very good health. And I would go visit her just to keep her company. And we would talk about whatever the problems were at the time. That would be in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. <clears throat> I don't know what we were discussing. And my position always was with my family was, we just need to educate them better. Spend more time in school, spend more money on schools, get better teachers. And they said, and they, they never offered another way of solving the world's problems. They would just say, no, that doesn't work. So never told me why. So one day my mother was getting tired of hearing this educational soul, but she says, son, you know, Every year I had to go back to the University of Buffalo and take those continuing education classes so I could keep my certificate of teach reading current. And every year I'd go there, they'd have a new expert come in and he would teach us a new way to teach reading that was more effective than the old ways, whatever they were. And I would get all excited. I would go back to the schools in the fall full of enthusiasm and I would try the new method of teaching. And she said, you know what happened? No matter which method I used, the smart ones got it and the stupid ones didn't. <laughs> okay, they weren't allowed to give IQ tests by then, but you can tell. I, I can tell, I'm sure most people can tell, just by looking at somebody, whether there's anybody home or not, okay? 
In Appalachia, there's not, not a lot of people home in general, okay? But the smart ones got it and the stupid ones didn't. That's the same in every area of life. The smart ones get it and the stupid ones don't. I was impressed with the Army's testing. And I, and I had been to college and I understood testing by then. And I was even a psych major briefly at Clarion College. And I understood standard deviation and all that stuff. But let me just give you a little quick anecdote about how good the Army testing is. First of all, they want to find out what job skills you're best at. So they give these tests. And then they put you in basic infantry training, which is horrible, you know, guns and hand grenades and all that shit. Eight weeks of that. And then they tell you what your, these are drafted people. They tell you what your, your military occupational specialty is going to be based on the test. And during basic training, they have people called acting jacks. Those are guys that get a, a temporary corporal band and they put it around their arm and they're in charge of you. Okay. Every one of those guys that was an acting jack was a dick, an absolute asshole who was just loved being in charge of people. Okay. Every one of those acting jacks got picked for MP school, plus all the other assholes in the entire company of 200 got picked for MP school. A total of 16 of them out of 200, and they nailed all the dickheads with their power-hungry shit. So MPs, the testing sorted that out. And my, my, my was picked for radio school because I had a low score in electronics and a high score in code, a Morse code. So the tests work. And then all these idiot left-wing wackos who go, no, IQ tests don't work. They don't prove anything. Horse shit. They're very accurate. But I doubt if we'll ever be able to see them again until Trump's been president 18 times in a row. We might get rid of it then. But right now, there's just so much crap coming from the left about everybody's equal. Everybody's the same. They are not. I can't jump like Michael Jordan. Christ, I can't shoot like Steve Curry. I'm not equal. I'm not their equal. And neither are you. Neither is anybody else. Okay. Intelligence is an inherited, inherited uh, characteristic. They don't like to even know that. They like to think everybody's the same. No, if you have stupid parents, you're going to have stupid kids. Okay. That's just a fact. But facts are not relative to the left wingers. They don't want to... my dogs commenting. All right. That's enough of that. You don't need to comment. So let me get back to IQ. When you go out in the business world, you're going to be sitting in an office and there's going to be, uh, well, maybe they're all getting the message from Bill Gates. Bill Gates found out that a unit, a work unit of 200 people is the ideal size. You go over there, you 200 people do this, you 200 people do that, you 102 people do that. Why? Because 200 people, you know everybody, you talk to everybody every day. And it's kind of hard for Deadwood to hide in a 200-person group. Everybody knows who the dumb shits are, who the deadbeats are, who the people aren't carrying their share with them. But you're still going to end up in a pool. They got through the interview. They got into this room. And you're going to end up in a group of, 20, let's say, 200 people. All right? Now, let's say they're all IQs are all above 110 and below 140. Might even be 150. 140 is IQ genius. Okay, so 150 to 110. So they all can do basic stuff that programmers do and paper pushers do and get get the job done. But you're going to be able to tell right away who the smart people are and who the dumb people are just by looking in their eyes. Okay, that's a bit of a wandering around on IQ, but let me tell you this. Just get on... Uh, what the hell is it, uh, iTunes, and look up Jordan Peterson's podcast. And find the one with Richard Heyer, H-A-I-E-R. And they're discussing intelligence. And they, they make a very radical claim that stupid people are poor because they're, I'm sorry, poor people are poor because they're stupid. Okay. There's not much we can do about it. They were born that way. People with an IQ below 85 can't hold any job. They can't even be street sweepers. Okay? They just don't have the equipment to show up on time, remember what they're supposed to do, and do it. 
half the population in the United States has an IQ below 100. Average, the bell-shaped curve, half the people are below average. Half the people are above average. Half the people are above average height. Half the people are above average weight. Half the people are above average income. Half, average means half. Half the people are below average in IQ. That's just a fact. I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just saying that's a fact. Half of the country is stupid. So this is just a little informative talk about IQ. You draw your own conclusions. My conclusion is I would like cops to have IQs of 150, okay? I don't like IQs of 110 with a gun. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think we can stop that. Okay, that's enough of this soapbox. I'll see you the next time I decide to talk about something like this.